Since I released the video about the cask bridge, cask bridge is a floating beer filter and I do have a video about it and I will link to it down below in the description. I got a lot of questions because uh, I showed basically how to use this in a keg or from the source, from Silac, it could be a keg mentor, but a pressurized vessel. But what if you want to use this in a bucket or some other questions had, uh, we want to make some posts here uh, on our bucket, how could we do that? Um, so I've been looking into that and I, today we're going to look at a DIY solution, maybe not recommended, but yeah, it's a ghetto version of the, uh, the better version I found, which I'm going to talk to Michael over at Brugo, today's sponsor, to order in if you want something more fancy and with that tool you can do even more stuff. But today we're going to check out how to put posts on our... Uh, bucket and how and why and so people would want to do that and maybe also why you really maybe wouldn't want to do that yeah so let's get into that but first I need a beer I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. If you want to learn with me how to come better at beer and brewing, consider becoming a subscriber and do hit that little bell so you get a notification when I put out a new video. And of course, help out by liking and sharing and comment down below. Yes, nice. So, this is my Amarillo Pale Ale, comes in at 3.5%. I have a grain to glass video from the making and the recipe of this beer is going to link to down, that down below. Also, it's freaking hot here in Sweden today, so yeah, we need something to get the yours moving. The reason that I want to do this today uh, is of course to help you guys who have been asking me a question, but I was sent this yeast uh, from La Lamont Philly sour, so this yeast is recommended to be handled as a wild yeast. It's not bacteria, it's yeast, but anyway, otherwise I could have done this in my fermented source. But I want to make a sour beer with fruits in it, and if I get a cask witch in there, I could just throw in the fruit loosely in here, and uh, I could use this bucket just for maybe this yeast, if I like it, I want to use it again. And uh, yeah, I can use my more expensive fermentosaurus for other stuff. That's my idea on why maybe someone could want to use this instead of other, other things. Don't please try to like stick posts here and do pressurized fermentation in, in vessels that weren't made for it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that at all. But yeah, you could basically with this DIY solution, turn anything into a keg. I would instead buy a vessel that is made and pressurized and tested and made for pressurized fermentation. Yeah, I have a whole playlist on pressurized fermentation. Yeah, I will link to that down below also. And yeah, link of course, of course also to today's sponsor, Brugot. Brugot is a Swedish home brewing supplier. Uh, they have a physical store here in Stockholm, Sweden, but yeah, they ship like all over Europe, so please go and check them out first, link in the description. And uh, yeah, there's links to my webpage and Patreon if you want to support or if you find this video helpful, yeah, buy me a beer. All links down below, link mania. Uh, so I just gonna remove the tap here and actually use the hole we already have here. And this hole I made with a 25 millimeter hole saw. This fits very snug. And the, the thing we need here is of course, uh, where did I put my stuff? We need a hose, of course. We need a cask witch. Uh, we need a vessel. And we need a carbonation cap. If you've found carbonation caps to be tricky in somehow using them, uh, not with every vessel, I would recommend getting a bigger seal. And if you are from Sweden or somewhere uh, where they have a bar house in Germany or, or like over Europe, uh, rubber seal number 20, it's, it's called 
here in Sweden at least, rubber seat number 20, and that m works much better than the original that came with, with it. Just pro tip, nice. So give this a like. We need a, a pet bottle. I was gonna do this on camera, but when I made the prototype, uh, I was nearly like bleeding out from cutting myself, so um, I don't recommend you build this. This, was, this is dangerous, and I didn't want this uh, nice table here to look like in uh, like a murder scene. So uh, yeah, I will show you the product and instead how I how I made it. So what you want to do is remove this. And we want only this part. Of course, you can shave this so it looks <laughs> semi professional at least. No, oh, this looks like a pro did it. Uh, the, the tricky thing that we need to do is also. We need to shave this second last lip, not the big one, we need the big one, but this, we need to shave this down so it doesn't stick out any further than the threads here do. There's where I cut myself, shaving this down, of course. You just shave this down and uh, yeah, yeah, let your dad do it. <laughs> Here's the, the finished prototype. So the second ring here no longer sticks out further than the threads and then you will be fine. So this might not be like the most sanitary thing but the, the, the part you have been shaving here will really never touch the beer. Only this end will and the inside of course. And then we just put this into the hole and I guess you could have made a, like a bigger hole of course but hey you know I like my holes tight. Yeah, uh, sorry, on here we will put the, the gasket from the, uh, from the old tap and that will sit perfectly on the, the big lip here on the pet bottle, what's left of it anyway. Stick this into the hole, threads from the inside and out, threads pointing out that is. It is snug, but I want the most contact as possible with the, with the seal here. I think actually that needs a little more shaving. Maybe be have some better knife also than, than, than I do. I'll try it again. Put the gasket on. Yeah, I think that will, will work now. You might have guessed it. The carbonation cap goes on to the, the pet threads. That means that outside, yeah, I will try it if it seals, but in my earlier testing, I tried overnight. Uh, that was with a, another prototype, which I placed somewhere in a really good place, as always. What we basically have here, we have a post here on the outside, and we have a nipple there on the inside where we can fit a, a hose. That means that we can easily get the casquet in here. You could also, like take a small hose like that, put like a carbonation stone. And if you want to do like real sour and really keep this uh, anaerobic, uh, you could flush this with CO2. Only the imagination sets the boundaries here. You could take an ordinary, like smaller pet bottle and slid it up and uh, put a hop socket on it. So you have a basically a filter that way also. Go crazy, but yeah, don't start using these as pressurized for fermenters. They aren't made for that. And if you really want to try to do like seal transfers from this with pressure, ooh, basically one PSI, half PSI, take it, take it carefully. But you really don't need to do that. Now you could just put your uh, beer line on here. It is a bit flimsy. Uh, I'm not really gonna use this method. I'm gonna try it once, see how I like it. And this one on the keg. And uh, the amount 
of O2 going into the beer from, from you racking off this into a closed perch keg from the surface when it's CO2 in here which slowly get mixed with O2 during those moments and it's just surface oxidization uh, with that gas blend. Uh, I wouldn't really be too concerned about that but you could just make a CO2 balloon or something like that but that's for another, another video or of course put a post up here also and just a small hint of CO2 on it. It's up to you. I'm just trying to respond here to some questions in video form because that's what I do. Cheers! Putting the cask witch on here. In here I would prefer a, a very short hose, not longer than the, uh, the vessel's width in itself. This don't need now to like float on top here because when the cask witch sink it can get blocked by, by the walls. Uh, it wouldn't happen if the post were up here really, but when the post is down here, the cask which can lean against the wall instead and you don't really want that. So I would go for a short one. And by the power television, I have a scissor. And not doing the same thing again, cutting it to short. No, I didn't. I'm fine. Are we good? This means that the, uh, the cask bridge will never f float up to the surface, but it doesn't have to in this case. I'm not like using this to get clear beer faster. I wouldn't like do that in a, in a bucket. That's better in, in a keg or, or more like a closed pressurized uh, vessel. Yeah. So this will be perfect for, for this. Let's fill her up and see if it leaks and if it works. The cask which floats nicely in there and there's no sign of leakage. So uh, I will give this a go, making a, a sour beer with the new Wild Brew Philly Sour and add a lot of fruits in here and, and try it out. But we should also try to see if we can actually draw a liquid from here. Because yeah, that's basically the idea. Yeah, it's holding. Will liquid flow? The water is flowing, but it's going extremely slow. What's blocking it? If I let's remove the uh, the cask witch and see, maybe you need pressure, and this was a bad idea. Is it the cask witch, or is it like the whole solution? It's not the cask witch causing the the, the problem. Uh, it could also, of course, be uh, the picnic, the thin line here. So we will change this out for a thicker line to see if this will work. Let's instead put on the thicker line here. And we will just need a second combination cap to test this. Uh, this is a vessel I need to, if I want to get a liquid into another pressurized tank, sealed under pressure, sealed transfer, sorry, uh, like gelatin or something like that. You could do hop tea. I do have a video down below about that also. I will try to remember to link to, to everything so you can go and check that out after, after this video. So let's try this. Please, can this just work now? Yeah, that works better. That do works better. I don't know how well you can you can see it. Of course, you need to have the 
yeah if you just have this very high and don't use the thin line this is it's working awesome no need to scratch this video idea what if it wouldn't have worked it's working uh, don't use the thin line for this was too much resistant in the thin line obviously you don't need pressure to do this Whew, thank god if you found this helpful consider buy me a beer like the video and if you aren't already consider becoming a subscriber do hit that little bell to get notifications when i put out a new video comment down below if you have any questions or if you're if you will try this uh, but yeah like i said earlier take it easy and uh, be be safe. Cheers and thanks for watching. Dr. Hansen.